Hey everybody, Brian from Witch Doctor here, and I uh, wanted to do a test on sorting primers. It is a practice that I have heard of, know a few shooters that do, and wanted to put it to the test. Alright, so what I did was I grabbed a box of CCI 450 primers from the same lot. I had uh, 200 of them um, all freshly sealed and then I had 20 more uh, in a box that I've been using for some testing. So a total of 220 primers I pulled out, um, weighed each of them in grains and I found this nice uh, normal distribution of weights. 3.6 grain, 3.62, on up to 3.72. I had none that were below 3.6 and none that were above 3.72. As you can see here with 3.6, I had 12 in that weight, 3.62, 32, 3.64, 45, 3.66, 66, 3.68, 34, uh, 3.7, 25, and 3.7, 26. Since I only had six in 3.72, I decided to actually load six rounds of each of these weights and then shoot all six of those rounds um, for each of these weights in a six shot group and measured velocity and group size. I use the same bat rifle that I've been using for all of my testing, so I won't go into the details of that. I use the LT32 powder at uh, 28.7 grains. Use the Honestine 65 grain bullet seeded 12 thousandths jam. That is what got me pretty good results, so I stuck with that. Loaded everything the same, same type of brass, same trim length, etc and uh, just went ahead and, and fired six shots groups with each of these um, primer weights and what i found was measuring velocity the average velocity for the six shot groups was a linear correlation with the weight size of the primer and velocity so starting down here with the lightest weight 3.6 I had 33.44 velocity for that six shot group, 3.62, 33.56, on up over here to 3.72 where I had 33.76 was my velocity. So from the lightest to the heaviest six shot group, there was a 32 feet per second difference. And the R squared, which means the proportion of variation accounted for by primer weight was roughly 88. 8%, which is really high. This is definitely a linear correlation with a difference between the lowest and smallest of 32 feet per second. Okay, now let's look at standard deviation. So in the 3.6, the lightest primers had a standard deviation on the six shot group of 11.9. And then it went down quite a bit here from the 3.62 to 3.68 range down here in the single digits with the lowest one being 3.64 at 5.7. And then it went back up here at 3.7 to 11.3 and 3.72 was 11.5. Um, this is called a curvolinear relationship and the R squared on that was 82%, 82.1% which means that um, there was a significant curvolinear relationship um, in, in this graph. Basically, the lighter and the heavier primers uh, showed higher standard deviations. The primers that were kind of near the middle of the distribution of the weight of the primer showed the lowest standard deviations. Now let's look at extreme spread. Um, we would think naturally from the graph before on standard deviations that extreme spread would show the same kind of curvilinear relationship, and it did, um, with the lighter and the heavier primers showing much greater extreme spread. And the primer weights here near the middle of the normal distribution of primer weight 
showing lower extreme spreads with 3.64 showing the lowest at a 14 extreme spread. The R square for this test was 90.2%, which means this is a significant curvilinear relationship. All right, now let's look at group size. Uh, group size had no um, relationship to the primer weight. Um, essentially, of all of them, the group sizes tended to be about the same. Um, however, we can see here 3.7 showed a much larger group size with the six shot groups than any of the others. Uh, the lowest group size actually was here at 3.66, followed by 3.6, and then 3.68. Those three uh, tended to have the same, about the same group size. Okay, now let's take a look at point of impact. Um, what was interesting here was the point of impact for all of these was about the same. <laughs> so with a really light primer weight, there's a point of impact here kind of below to the left. Um, at 3.62, once again, below to the left, 3.64, uh, below to the left, <laughs> 3.66, again, below to the left. So they all showed the same point of impact, just about the same. Um, some slight variations here and there. There's 3.70 with that large group. That was all over the place. And, and I was not shooting in uh, conditions. It was extremely calm at the range today. Um, so I really didn't shoot in conditions. These um, groups look very reliable and valid and all have just about the same point of impact. Okay, so in conclusion, it looks like the average velocity, uh, there's a direct correlation, direct relationship between velocity and primer weight. Um, I'm speculating that with lighter primer weights, there may be less primer compound uh, and a, basically a, a weaker ignition, if you will. And in some ways that, that basically makes it a, a slower velocity. Whereas with really heavy primers or the heaviest primers, there's probably um, an abundance of compound, primer compound in there, really igniting that really hard and driving the velocity up. Um, standard deviation and extreme spread was interesting. Um, my guess is, you know, we're seeing 3.64, 3.66, 3.68 6, showing really low standard deviations and really low extreme spreads. Uh, looking at the sort data, these are also the primers with the highest frequency. So if you go and break out a brick of primers, weigh them all, you're going to have, you know, 3.64 to 3.68, you're going to have the most primers in that weight range. So it's interesting, it almost seems like the primer <laughs> company knows, uh, th these were CCI 450 primers, the primer company knows this is an ideal compound weight for this primer and they must set their machines to prime at, at, at those weights, um, which gets you pretty much the best performance in, in terms of you know um, standard deviation and extreme spread. Although the groups and the point of impact um, were kind of all over the place. Um, uh, average velocity, standard deviation, and extreme spread didn't seem to correlate uh, with the group size. Um, however, we did get that one really small group at 3.66, which again had a low standard deviation, low ES. Uh, velocity on that was 3360. Um, anyway, so interesting results for a short range test. This was done at 100 yards. Um, and I am wondering and speculating if I shot this same test at 600 yards, you know, what, what my group size would look like there um, and whether any of these larger variations in like standard deviation and extreme spread would show much larger groupings at that distance. So um, anyway, we'll go ahead and probably give that a test at some point here when I, when I can get out to the 600 yard range. but. For now, at 100 yards, it looks like some interesting results. We can definitely expect some velocity changes based on the weight of the primer um, and maybe an ideal range for standard deviation and extreme spread. 
Um, but I would not base my entire story on velocity, standard deviation, and extreme spread. I would look on the target because that gives you the most meaningful results here. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe, like, and share.